The ground beneath California is alive, and the San Andreas Fault is making its presence known once again. Just hours ago, a magnitude 3.7 earthquake shook the region, a sharp reminder of the seismic forces constantly at work. This quake, followed by a series of aftershocks, has sparked fresh concerns among residents and experts alike. Are these smaller tremors just a natural part of life along the fault line? Or could they be early warnings of something much bigger, a potential big one? With millions living in the shadow of this geological giant, the question isn't just if, but when. How ready is California to face the reality of a massive quake? The West Coast, particularly around the San Andreas Fault, has shown signs of increased seismic movement, with activity near the Bay Area catching attention. Earlier this morning, a magnitude 3.6 earthquake initiated a sequence that continues to develop. This pattern raises concerns about the potential for a larger event, as the accumulated strain in Northern California could trigger a significant earthquake. Whether it would match the magnitude 7.9 quake of 1906 remains uncertain. However, the central and southern segments of the fault also carry years of built-up stress, making broader regions of California susceptible to more intense seismic activity. In Northern California, a 3.3 magnitude earthquake near the plate boundary between the Gorda Plate and the Pacific Plate reflects the region's persistent tectonic pressures. Meanwhile, tremor activity along the Cascadia subduction zone reveals a modest uptick with approximately six recorded epicenters. Although minor, these tremors could signal a broader escalation, particularly in light of the magnitude 7.0 earthquake that occurred in Northern California a few weeks prior. Such activity underscores the region's heightened strain and potential for significant seismic events. The possibility of an earthquake in the magnitude 8.0 range looms as a matter of probability and historical precedent. The last magnitude 8.0 quake occurred in 2021, four years ago. Statistically, a quake of that magnitude is expected roughly every one to two years globally, suggesting the Earth may be overdue. This quiet stretch raises the likelihood of a major event as the planet's tectonic plates continue their unyielding movements. The data paints a vivid picture of Earth's dynamic systems and serves as a reminder of the power and unpredictability of the natural world. Seismic activity across the globe has shown intriguing patterns over the decades, hinting at the planet's unpredictable yet cyclical nature. Between 1960 and 2025, records of earthquakes measuring 6.5 and above reveal striking trends, particularly in the occurrence or lack thereof, of magnitude 8.0 quakes. The last recorded 8.0 event occurred in the South Sandwich Islands on August 12, 2021, marking the end of a year that saw three significant earthquakes, including an 8.2 in Alaska and an 8.1 near the Kermadec Islands. This cluster of high-magnitude quakes raises questions about whether such bursts of seismic activity temporarily offset the global average. Looking back, the intervals between 8.0 earthquakes reveal a rhythm that is hard to ignore. While some years saw multiple occurrences, others stretched into lengthy gaps, such as the current four-year lull since 2021. Historically, global averages suggest an expectation of at least one such event annually or every other year. However, deviations from this pattern like the ongoing period of relative quiet, may indicate a buildup of strain within the Earth's tectonic plates. Further analysis shows that periods of relative seismic dormancy often precede significant activity. For instance, in 2018, a 7.8 magnitude earthquake, while powerful, fell just short of the 8.0 threshold. It was followed by a true 8.2 in Fiji later that year. Similarly, Years like 2015 and 2014 recorded 8.3 and 8.2 magnitude earthquakes, maintaining the near-annual cadence. Yet, the absence of 8.0 events for four consecutive years is a rare anomaly that stands out in the historical data. This extended period of quiet 
raises concerns about whether the energy typically released by such quakes is instead accumulating for a larger event. The Earth operates on a delicate balance of forces, and deviations from historical averages may hint at tectonic stress building beneath the surface. Whether this buildup will result in a single catastrophic release or a series of smaller events remains to be seen. What is certain is that Earth's tectonic dance continues, shaping its future and reminding humanity of the immense forces at work beneath their feet. Likewise, since 1960, the planet has experienced just four earthquakes of magnitude 9.0 or greater, underscoring their rarity compared to the more frequent magnitude 7.0 and 8.0 events. The most recent, the Great Japan Earthquake of 2011, remains etched in memory for its devastation. The largest earthquake ever recorded occurred in Chile in 1960, a staggering magnitude 9.5, demonstrating the immense energy these events release. Currently, the west coast of the United States is experiencing a notable uptick in seismic activity. The pattern is not isolated to a single area, but spans the entire region. For example, Los Angeles recorded a 2.1 magnitude earthquake early this morning. While there are no signs of significant swarming along the San Andreas Fault at present, the region's history and tectonic complexity warrant close observation. When the Pacific Plate shifts, the effects often ripple far and wide. This interconnected movement can trigger adjustments across great distances, demonstrating the scale of Earth's tectonic forces. Elsewhere, seismic activity is also making its presence felt. A magnitude 5.0 earthquake recently struck southern Mexico near Guatemala, followed just 20 minutes later by a 3.3 magnitude adjustment farther north. Such events highlight the interconnected nature of Earth's plates, where movements in one location can influence others thousands of miles away. For the vast plates of the Earth's crust, distances that seem immense to human perception are relatively minor in the grand tectonic dance. In Australia, a 4.9 magnitude earthquake was recorded, an uncommon but significant event for the region. While its precise impact on populated areas remains unclear, historical data shows that such magnitudes are rare in this part of the world. Meanwhile, New Zealand observed a minor 3.2 magnitude quake, largely attributed to aftershocks from an earlier 4.9 event. Movement across the Philippines continues in a typical southward pattern, while Japan and the Marianas Trench remain unusually quiet for the moment. However, California warrants close attention, as the region often serves as a seismic focal point. Earlier this evening, a magnitude 5.0 earthquake struck at a depth of approximately 125 miles within the Middle America Trench. Following this deep event, additional activity has been observed in the surrounding region, highlighting its tectonic dynamism. South America is currently experiencing minimal seismic activity, with only a few minor quakes in the magnitude 2 and 3 range. Meanwhile, the Pacific Northwest in the United States remains relatively calm, with Yellowstone showing no significant seismic signals apart from minor noise likely caused by wind, as indicated by darker blue readings on monitoring instruments. In Texas, activity continues in the oil fields, a region known for induced seismicity, while the New Madrid Seismic Zone recorded a modest 2.4 magnitude quake early this morning. The eastern portion of the United States remains largely quiet. Hawaii, however, tells a different story. Offshore swarming near the Big Island includes multiple quakes in the magnitude 2 and 3 range, primarily shallow events. This activity may be linked to the immense weight of the Hawaiian Islands exerting pressure on the Pacific Plate's hotspot region. At Kalawea Volcano, deformation data indicates a steady increase in summit inflation since the pause in eruptive activity earlier this month. This gradual inflation suggests that magma is accumulating beneath the surface, increasing the likelihood of a resumption in eruptive activity. Although earthquake activity at Kalawea remains minimal at present, the volcano's behavior points to a potential eruption in the near future, possibly even within hours. 
Monitoring instruments show subtle changes that suggest the subsurface systems are in flux, with heated zones and rising magma signaling the ongoing evolution of this volcanic system. The ever-shifting landscape of Hawaii serves as a reminder of the dynamic forces shaping Earth's crust. The Mediterranean region currently experiences moderate seismic activity, with tremors registering in the range of magnitude 2 and 3. Notable events are also unfolding along the Ethiopian Rift Boundary, a significant tectonic zone. This region's slow tectonic separation may trigger both seismic and volcanic activity, though the precise developments remain uncertain. Recent data from regional seismographs highlight a 5.2 magnitude earthquake earlier in the day, accompanied by several smaller quakes. The ongoing activity in this area could persist or gradually subside, but the situation remains unpredictable. In the Atlantic, conditions are relatively calm, with minimal seismic activity reported. Turning to space weather, solar activity remains subdued. A newly emerged sunspot exhibits significant core separation, reducing the likelihood of significant solar flares. Across the solar surface, there is minimal potential for substantial flare events, with overall activity remaining low. Forecasts suggest only a slight chance of minor flares, with solar indices indicating a quiet period ahead. Period ahead. Meanwhile, Terrestrial weather patterns show cold air continuing its southward progression across much of the United States, sparing California, which remains relatively unaffected. Projections for the coming weekend hint at snowfall in some regions, with a potential shift toward wetter conditions around the 21st. Some models indicate a possibility of rain in California, offering hope for much-needed precipitation. These developments, though not definitive, are trends worth monitoring. Strong winds are forecasted to return to Southern California by Monday, intensifying concerns in regions already battling wildfires. Current wind gusts remain relatively calm, but offshore wind events are expected to strengthen, particularly by Monday, posing a significant threat to fire-prone inland areas. Recent satellite data reveals active hotspots, especially in mountainous regions above Pasadena, where the Eaton fire continues to spread with only 3% containment. The fire has already inflicted extensive damage, and recent flare-ups suggest it is advancing into areas that previously escaped the flames, expanding its reach to over 21,000 acres. In the northern regions, the Palisades fire has devastated numerous homes, its aggressive movement up the mountains and into surrounding communities highlighting the ongoing danger. Satellite imagery continues to detect intense heat signatures, indicating persistent fire activity. The situation remains critical as fires threaten to push further west and north into rugged, elevated terrain. The Kenneth Fire shows some progress with 50% containment, while the Hearst Fire is nearing resolution at 70% containment. The Lydia Fire is almost fully contained at 98% offering a small victory amid widespread devastation. Meanwhile, the newly ignited Anchor Fire has had its forward progress halted, though isolated hotspots remain active, hinting at the potential for reignition. Despite relatively mild winds at present, forecasts suggest conditions could worsen, increasing the risk of fires reigniting or spreading. In response, substantial firefighting resources have been mobilized with personnel from multiple counties and states uniting to combat the relentless blazes. Their coordinated efforts offer hope for containment in the days ahead. In the midst of these natural threats, minor seismic activity near the Petrolia station has been observed, although small earthquakes in this region often go unreported. As California faces both fire and seismic risks, the coming days will be critical in determining how these challenges unfold. Back in San Andreas, seismologists reveal indicators of an imminent San Andreas Fault rupture. The Parkfield section of the San Andreas Fault in California is considered a key indicator for potential major earthquakes in the San Andreas Fault Zone due to its unique seismic behavior and geological significance. Several factors contribute to its importance. The San Andreas Fault, stretching over 800 miles, this immense fracture in the Earth's crust 
marks the boundary between two colossal tectonic plates, the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. Slowly but relentlessly, these massive slabs of the Earth grind past one another, locked in a timeless struggle. Along this boundary, one section stands out as both a window into the Earth's deep mechanics and a sentinel for the future, the Parkfield segment. Parkfield is no ordinary stretch of land. It occupies a critical position where the nature of the San Andreas Fault changes dramatically. To the north, the fault creeps almost imperceptibly, releasing tension through slow, steady motion. To the south, however, the fault is tightly locked, silently hoarding energy that could one day be unleashed in a catastrophic earthquake. Parkfield sits precisely at this crossroads, a geological pivot point between creeping motion and dangerous rigidity. This unique position makes it a natural laboratory for understanding how and when the Earth might shift violently beneath our feet. The tectonic forces at work here are immense. The Pacific Plate is slowly moving northwestward, while the North American Plate drifts in the opposite direction. This movement isn't smooth or predictable. Instead, the plates catch and grind, their jagged edges snagging on each other. Over years, decades, even centuries, stress builds up along the fault, bending and deforming the rocks deep underground. Eventually, the locked sections of the fault can no longer contain the pent-up energy, and the earth violently snaps back into place. This sudden release sends shockwaves racing through the ground, an earthquake. But Parkfield behaves differently. It has a history of relatively regular earthquakes, typically around magnitude 6.0, occurring roughly every two decades. Between 1857 and 1966, six such quakes struck almost like clockwork. This unusual pattern led scientists to believe Parkfield might hold the key to unlocking the secrets of earthquake prediction. If they could understand why Parkfield quakes with such rhythm, perhaps they could anticipate when larger, more destructive earthquakes might rupture the fault elsewhere. Driven by this possibility, Parkfield became one of the most heavily monitored places on Earth. In the early 1980s, the U.S. Geological Survey launched a bold experiment to predict an earthquake. Researchers installed a dense network of seismometers, strain meters, GPS sensors, and even drilled deep boreholes into the fault to place instruments close to where earthquakes begin. They were betting that the next Parkfield earthquake would strike between 1985 and 1993. But the Earth had other plans. The predicted quake didn't come until 2004, decades later than expected. Though the prediction failed, the data collected was invaluable. It revealed just how complex and unpredictable the fault truly is, challenging scientists to refine their understanding of how stress builds and releases along fault lines. Beneath Parkfield, the fault doesn't simply break in dramatic fashion. Instead, it hosts a quiet but powerful phenomenon known as fault creep, a slow, steady sliding of the tectonic plates past each other. This creeping motion releases energy gradually, unlike the violent rupture of locked segments. Yet, even in this seemingly gentle process, the fault can produce swarms of small earthquakes, tiny whispers of the earth shifting. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay aware.